Hey guys, Matthew here, and welcome back to another episode. In today's episode, I'm going to be showing you how to install SharePoint Server 2010 on Server 2012 R2. Now, the reason I'm doing this is purely because of um, I am I'm not able to use SharePoint 2013 or 16 due to some uh, hardware uh, requirements that I did not meet, as well as that I did actually do um, a test with it. Um, and personally, I actually like SharePoint 2010 a lot more. Um, there are some downsides to SharePoint 2010, but honestly, I would use it in today's standards. Um, purely because of the hardware requirements that it gives, it's actually very useful. Um, I'm also actually recording on my laptop today as well, if you haven't realized, uh, my ThinkPad. Um, so we're gonna set this up, and this is all gonna be inside this machine, and we're hopefully gonna access it from another computer. So first thing that we need to do is go ahead and install Server 2012 R2. Um, I've given this system two cores and four gigs of RAM, and that should allow it. Now the thing is right, this thing is using four gigs of RAM um, as a virtual machine, but the thing is my ThinkPad's got four gigs of RAM. So what I'm actually doing is it's emulating that memory um, using the hard drive space. It's pretty clever how it works with VMware. So the first thing I need to do is obviously go ahead and select the language, which is Australia. We're going to install that. Obviously, you guys have probably seen this a million times now. We're setting up Server 2012 R2, but I also have to do this for my TAFE course or EVET course. Um, uh, I'm creating a user documentation, so this is actually something as well that I'm planning to do and develop. Um, and I'm actually going to be doing this as a live stream as well, um, and hopefully I'll have the video up um, on the for the 23rd because I want to actually uh, show you guys because I was building a PC in Minecraft with a real physical that like actual in the green screen it was so cool how it worked uh, but anyway now I'm going to install Server 2012 R2 standard evaluation and this is a 64-bit version as you can see Server 2012 R2 has not been used in fact a lot of people are moving over to 2016 um, in fact the course that I go to they actually use Server 2008 which is actually quite surprising um, I've actually never seen them Using, uh, using a system that has uh, 2008, because apparently it's obsolete or something. So, no idea about that. But anyway, as you guys can see, I'm just going ahead and installing Server 2012 R2. Um, I'm not sure how long this is gonna take, so um, I have no idea myself, uh, but hopefully it shouldn't take too long. I'll be back when it's finished. Okay, so the installation has just started. Uh, finish sorry I meant and as you guys can see we're all good to go and we're doing pretty well So now all we've got to do is just finish up and then we should be good to go. We're going to first rename the computer uh, assign it a static IP address then give it a um, Server uh, then we're going to uh, uh, Put it to the domain and then finally set it up. So Pretty much that's the simple, it's really simple to install once you know what you're doing, but you might also come up with a bit of an error. There is a hotfix error that Microsoft no longer supports, but there is a workaround with that. I call it a bypass, um, and that's how we're going to do it. So we're going to bypass the hotfix error uh, using a special error code. Uh, a batch file that was made by, I can't remember his name, I think it was Steve. Um, and he has a website which I will link in the description to all the necessary requirements. There will also be an install guide like um, in the description. So I've written up a tutorial guide on how to install it uh, in the description below if you would like to have a look at that. Um, so yes, other than that, uh, we're just going to let it boot up. It might take a few minutes because it's obviously got to get devices ready and things like that. So once it's done that, I'll be right back. Okay, so now that uh, Windows Server 2012 R2 has rebooted, done a few of its fancy little heavy jeebie thingies, we are good to go. So all I'm going to do now is go ahead and put a password in. Um, and this is the local administrator password. We haven't assigned this to a domain yet, but once I do... Oh, oh come on, Matt. You should be better than that. Right, let's put the correct password in. Put the password in. Beautiful, finalizing your settings. And then all we got to do is do Control alt insert on the keyboard, do that. Now we've done the Control alt delete command. We're going to now prepare it. It's going to have its little box up here somewhere uh, to say that it's getting itself ready. And then once we've done that, yeah, there you go, there it was. Um, and once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and, oh, hang on, let me move this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, set it up. Um, that way we can 
so what we're going to do now is with the system's all good to go it should see the domain home.local which it has beautiful that's my domain network and what we're going to do now is we're going to set this up and it should allow us to connect now apparently obs is having some issues with recording which i don't like but uh, we'll just have to deal with it. Okay, so now that this is connected, I would typically go ahead and install VMware tools, but because um, I don't want it installed, because I'm actually going to sysprep and clone this with uh, MDT, it's gonna just be a bit too tricky. So I'll just give it the good old 1920 by 1080. Beautiful. All right, so as you guys can see here now, we've got the evaluation for 180 days, um, and we lost a few frame rates there again. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Server Manager. Yeah, this is horrible. The, the, the quality of this is horrible. Well, the, 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 the capturing of it is horrible. But I'm just trying to do my best as I can. So, what we're going to now do is I need to configure this local server. If this is going to work. I need to change the computer name. Now, I'm going to give this a, uh, a computer name called SP1. Which means SharePoint 1. And then also connect it to the domain. So first off. SP1, I'm going to put it to the domain home. Now, usually I'd have to, I'm going to just do this now, I'm going to go into my domain control. Okay, so I think we're recording, but I'm still getting high issues again with the recordings of uh, the encoding, and it's just a bit of a pain in the neck. Uh, let's have a look at the encoding, because I'm using all system memory for this computer, so that's, well, so now that I'm on my main system, we're going to now hopefully, we're going to remote into the server now. I've called it SP1, and hopefully it should see it on the network. Bingo, I can now configure it and log in. And all I'm going to do is type the administrator account in. And I forgot to add the domain. So I do home and then slash, or you could do at your domain. Now, usually, typically, one domain is, con I use the con uh, I use my own domain, but typically you can have the Contoso domain if you wanted to, because um, Microsoft are very supportive with Contoso. Uh, or con yeah, I think that's how you pronounce it, Contoso or Con, yeah, that's how you say it. But anyway, so now that we've applied the settings to it, um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, we're going to now install SharePoint. Uh, now that we actually have the server configured, we're good to go. It's been uh, added to the domain. I'm logged in as the network administrator account. It's time that we actually get ready to go ahead and install the um, go ahead and install the server roles. Whoops, wrong one. Woo! Right. So first off, we need to go to my IT resources drive. I've already set up all of my um, files and things like that. But I actually have all of this software here that I use. Um, there's two things that I'm going to need, or actually three. I'm going to copy these across, so I'll explain what these are in just a sec. Okay, so while that's copying across, what these are. So the following things are, the SharePoint server itself. This is the SQL server. Some I probably keep this just in case that the uh, prerequisites, I can't say it right, um, requirements doesn't work. And then I'll go ahead and install that. And then this is the hand server manager CMD. This is where uh, we, this is the piece of software that bypasses the, um, goes ahead and bypasses the uh, hotfix error. And once we've done that, we should be able to go ahead and install it. It's actually quite easy and quite fun once you know what you're doing. But other than that, this, the local server is now finished. I will do one thing though. What we do need to do is go and disable the firewall completely. And the reason for that is because um, if you have the firewall enabled, there can be some issues with the computers talking with each other. So what I do is I go ahead and turn everything off. And the reason for this is because I actually have a, another firewall that I actually use. I actually have a, I can't remember what it is. It's a net gate or something on those lines. I've had it for so long now. And it is a ridiculously good firewall. Um, and that's how I protect our network. So first things first, uh, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to grab this little server manager CMD command. I'm going to need to go into uh, local disk, uh, Windows, System32. Then we want to just paste it directly in there, like that. Beautiful. So that's now copied. Now we need to run the SharePoint installer. This shouldn't take too long. We're going to run it. And then hopefully we should be good to go. Now this is the SharePoint Foundation version. And the reason for this is because SharePoint Foundation is actually for free. 
you just need the requirements like server 12 r2 to run it um you can't I, apparently people have managed to run this on windows 7 i'm not sure if that's correct but i'm using the server 2012 r2 so first thing that we need to do is go ahead and install the software prequisites i think i said that right and as you can see it's going to install the following things like your um application server your uh web server uh your sql server your sync and all that kind of good stuff so all we're going to do is accept the license agreement then all we got to do is just wait for it to install so i'll be back once it's well actually you know i might just leave this and um i'll fast forward it so hopefully fingers crossed though that i've been recording through my logitech microphone because if i haven't i'll be absolutely annoyed and you might just hear the fan spinning and then the video will just be awful and i have to restart it a whole over again right i've just got to pause the video quickly just to see if i have recorded it and then i'll be right back Okay, so we had a bit of a uh, installation error, as you can see here. Uh, these two are fine, but then we get the hotfix error. So what I need to do is, well, first off, I've copied it across the um, that hotfix error, so that should have worked by now. But potentially, um, I don't know if that's the right way how I've done it because that should have configured itself. That's weird because when I did it, um, I had no issues. So. For some weird reason, hopefully we don't get that message or error again. Um, so hopefully though, fingers crossed, we actually managed to uh, get this working. So, a case, yes, there we go, sync frame. Yes, okay, there we go, beautiful. So as you guys can see, I copied across the file and now we're actually, it has bypassed the uh, sync framework error or something, whatever that is. But as you guys can see now, we're hitting it up again. Let's do it, because this now has done its configuration. And well, I'm happy now because that should have uh, not done it in the first time. But as you guys can see now, all working just fine. And I will be back once this is all finished and installed. Okay, so after about half an hour, we're all successfully installed. As you can see, something else already was installed and equivalent products were installed. Beautiful. Now that we've finished that, we can now go ahead and install the SharePoint Foundation. This is getting easier and easier and easier. Before then, I had a lot of issues. Um... Oh, we have to restart the system. Okay, well, let's do that then. That, I've never had to do that before. But oh well, we should have it installed hopefully because, well, as long as the pre-requirements are installed, then we should be good to go. Oh yeah, by the way, we should reply to a few scam emails sometime, that'd be fun. <laughs> okay, I have a question for all of you. Have any of you guys seen this James, whatever is, uh, James, uh, what's his name? James Verdict, I think it is. 
Oh my goodness, he is so funny. Right, anyway, let's now do a step. So we're going to uh, now go ahead and install it. So obviously we accepted the terms and conditions. Now we're going to click standalone. Um, and all we got to do is just literally let it install. That's all we got to do. Nothing else. That's just literally all we got to do. How funny is that? Oh wait, it is pretty funny. Um, but other than that, uh, once we've done that, as you can see, it's going to install it. It shouldn't take too long. But it's then got to run a through a few checks. It's got to run through a few, um, yeah, through a few checks and a few things like that. Now, hopefully, the database should be configured by itself. If not, then uh, don't panic because I fortunately do know how to do that. But that should not be the case because when I install it on my server, we shouldn't have any issues. Right, I'll be back once this is finished. Okay, guys, so the configuration is now installed. Sorry, the uh, SharePoint is now installed. Now we need to run the configuration wizard. Now, this shouldn't take too long, but other than that, the installation is now finished. We now have got to go ahead, click next, and it may need to be started. Okay, so we've just got to click accept all those terms and stuff. Uh, but other than that, we've got to let it just install, and it's going to perform some tasks. So it's out of 10, I meant, not 8. Um, once that's configured, we will then go ahead and be able to go onto the to the server from any computer. So once that's done, I will go ahead and uh, resume the video. Okay, so now that we actually have the system configured, it's now time that we can access it. So the way we're going to do it now is we, um, as you can see, this is all just the configuration um, um, wizard. Now, I just it might ask you a question or anything like that but the way we access this is very simple now it will obviously show you how to access it um, but the, pretty much it is your server name um, and that's it in my case I want to put the administrator password in and as you guys can see here we're going to load it and once that's done we should hopefully get prompted to it and then it should work now it doesn't work very well in Internet Explorer um, but also I am running this on my computer uh, and emulating it on an old laptop. But other than that, it actually seems to be working ridiculously well. Um, it hasn't got a HTTPS, it's a HTTP. And here we go, it's now loading. And here you go guys, we have now set up Internet Explorer 11, uh, Internet Explorer, we have now set up Server 2012 R2 to allow us to use the SharePoint server. Well done, guys. If you followed my discussion and you well, you managed to bear with me for the past, you know, half an hour or so. Well done, guys. You've installed SharePoint. It's actually really, really easy now to install it. And it hopefully should be pretty simple. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching this episode. And if you did enjoy it, please hit that like button. Do subscribe and share a comment in the comment section below. I love um, replying back to your comments. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching once again. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.